do this or else. Sound familiar? Well, many of us grew up in homes where there was a law laid down and there was no challenging it. And if you promised yourself long ago, you'd never raise your own children that way, but you now find yourself doing it. Love and Logic facilitator and school psychologist Margot Fisher is with us this morning to help maybe break that cycle. Margo, thanks for being here. Hi. Last week we talked about helicopter parenting mm -hmm. and the pros and cons of that, and of which you said there are no pros. <laughs> um, today we're talking about drill sergeants. Yep. Talk about, um, I guess, what it is about this particular style of parenting that has uh, many people repeating that cycle. Well, I think a lot of people were parented that way to begin with, and you know, children were seen not to be heard, and. Um, if, if someone tells you what to do, you're supposed to do it, and you're not supposed to ask any questions. So I think um, a lot of people, certainly of my generation, were raised that way. You say the, this type of parent commands and directs the lives of children. And those messages often, you say, provide a low personal worth. Yep. And resistance. What does that mean? Well, you're essentially telling children they don't know how to think, they can't make decisions for themselves, and that you make such bad decisions that I have to do it all for you. So, you know, there's, there's nothing in that that encourages a child to be a problem solver or um, makes a child feel like their parent thinks they have any confidence in their abilities. Which further erodes? Further erodes, okay. yeah, certainly. Make, makes a lot of demands and has a lot of expectations about responsibility. Pretty self-explanatory there. Right. Uh, tells the child how he or she should handle responsibility. Tells the child how he or she should feel. What are the most important takeaways with those points? Once again, you're not learning anything about your child. Your child isn't learning anything about themselves in terms of being able to express who they are, what they think, how they might solve a problem. It's all about what their mom and dad thinks, all about what their mom and dad tells them to do. So they get to school and they say, my mom hasn't taught me that yet. Well, guess what, honey, you know how to think. So let's see what you can do with your own thinking skills. These kids are very teacher-dependent kids. They expect their teacher to do everything for them because they've never been allowed to do things for themselves or think for themselves. Where do you strike that balance between not asking them to do enough doing too much for them. And what, is a, what is a good first step for a person that may be parenting in this capacity, realizes it, and does want to change? Uh, I think instead of telling a child what to do, saying, well, what do you think you need to do? I mean, that's, you know, for, for the person whose first words out of their mouth is, you should, um, for them to take that step backwards and say, well, what do you think you should do? How do you think you should handle that? Put it back that? on the child. Put it back on the child. Let the kid do the thinking Ever and the problem to solving. Start? Ever <laughs> too early never to start? Never too early okay. to start. All right. Good And insights. never too late to start. There you go. <laughs> very <laughs> good reminder, Margot. Thank you very much.